Hi there folks, today I'm doing a short update on our small greenhouse and uh, the cold frame bed which we have here in front of the house. It has been a couple of weeks maybe, I have to check to be exactly sure, but uh, since the last time I did an update and you can see the thing has progressed nicely. The tomatoes have been uh, up potted, some uh, 100 plants out of them and they are still very lush they still have uh, maybe 300 plants here for future uh, potting and giving away a trial carrot uh, seed test have been done here because we're not sure of the germination rates of our carrot seeds we have uh, cantaloupe germinating here some uh, chili peppers some eggplant some early determinant bush variety tomatoes, some tomatillos, the zucchini, the courgettes are already growing nicely and ready to be planted out and that will happen next week. Next week. Those are some uh, cucumbers and more cucumbers with more germinating for a bit of a staggered planting. The red beets have been planted out and those have been selected to give away to some neighbors. This is a trial uh, seed starting trade for peas because most of our peas in the garden have been decimated by slugs and crickets. So we decided this year to do a test run. And we've done this uh, uh, 24 cell tray with uh, two pieces in each uh, cell but so far the germination has been unimpressive even though those are freshly bought seeds i specifically bought seeds to just eliminate the possibility of our seed being a problem those are our uh, sweet potato slips which we uh, brought out of the house too early and they uh, got defoliated basically it was, I think, a bit too harsh for them outside, and some of them completely died away, but some of them are recovering now. You can see that uh, they're growing new leaves, so there's hope for them yet. There are more flowers here, which are in the shade, but they have not been germinated yet, so no worries with that. The lettuce starts have been developing very nicely, and we can start harvesting those in maybe two weeks. And there's some late crop radishes here germinating. Those are the up potted tomatoes, which you saw in the last video. They're all performing well. Some more lettuce here and uh, peppers uh, in those two planters, which we want to compare how they perform, uh, how quick they germinate compared to our other pepper seeds, which we have in the cold frame bed. I will now show you and this is the cold frame bed frame which we started this year I have already shown you the space before and now I'm just doing a quick rundown on all the things that are growing here from this side those little plastic markers indicate uh, a pepper variety and two tomato varieties which we call giveaway tomatoes because those seedlings uh, are just given away as gifts to our neighbors and friends and relatives and the peppers are now started to germinate and uh, one has to be very careful about weeding not to uproot some of the tiny pepper starts and this has to be watered today this is the second crop of radishes which is developing very nicely and it's also starting to form as you can see here, so we'll start harvesting those as well very soon. The other uh, first crop of radishes was here. We harvested all of those, maybe 30 radishes, and reseeded. So this will become the third crop of radishes. The onion starts have already been snipped at the top ones. And uh, I'll have to do a second snip today because you can see they start uh, falling to the side lying over this means that they have been uh, left to grow too much and you can easily shorten them so they grow in thickness instead of height 
The lettuces have been harvested many times. They are harvested by a single leaf. You can see in the back there where we uh, snip the leaves. This allows a continuous harvest and no need to constantly replant the lettuce plants. The kale, the curly kale plant, which grow here as a seed start, they have been planted out down in the garden and uh, I left just a few here for uh, in case any of those in the garden have been eaten. The leek starts have also been growing nicely and they have been snipped and they can be trimmed again. And this is the arugula or uh, rocket which have been harvested maybe three or four times by just cutting the tops and it regrows. You can see that it's almost ready for another harvest. The green onions have started forming their flowering scapes. So we'll have to probably uproot and eat those onions and start something else in their place as well. With the idea of never keeping uh, any of the spots empty. And here in the space of this curly kale, we probably start our red Russian variety because the one which we did in the bigger cold frame down in the garden uh, got all eaten or it was damaged in some way and we won't probably have enough for the season. Today I wanted to show you our failed seed starting bed. Uh, we started that a few weeks ago but um, it and I already showed you an update which seemed nice at first but then we found out that uh, some animal, some digging burrowing animal has uh, decided to make this bed its home and you can see that uh, the whole bed is now full of holes everything under the surface is dug in tunnels and uh, the roots of most of the plants have started to die out and to add to that, we also had a frost and the cats have took to climbing here all the time. Uh, and also we had some frost unexpectedly. So you can see some frost damage here on the uh, red tamarind and on the zinnia flowers. We forgot to put the plastic cover on. So most of the stuff we put here didn't germinate. Some of the red kale germinated, but very badly and it's distorted. Some of the onions, but most have uh, fallen through the uh, holes in the soil. Some of the late tomatoes, but maybe less than 10%. And none of the flowers which you planted in this space have germinated well. And none of the first uh, three or four lines here. So what we will do now is uh, dig over this bed, not deeply, but we have to eliminate the tunnel structure here, but you can see just undermines the whole bed. And then we'll decide if you want to reseed some of the seeds or maybe start everything in pots in the small greenhouse and uh, directly plant seedlings which have been grown previously here in the bed. But uh, our suspicion is that because we kept it covered with the plastic, it created a really nice environment. It was sheltered from the rain. It was sheltered from predators. The cats couldn't stalk whatever was digging here. And also it was very warm compared to the neighboring soil beds. So whatever did this, maybe a mole rat or field mouse or I don't know, but it really liked this place. So we will now keep that uncovered and restart whatever is possible. I'm not sure that will be visible in the video at all, but you can see those tiny green hairs here. Those are our germinating tomatoes. I will include a couple of uh, photos of those. 
uh, we seeded those maybe two weeks ago and uh, used our technique with the burwap bags where they sit on top of the surface and you water the bed through the burwap and it keeps the soil moist and it allows the seeds to remain on the surface without getting uh, all dry so this assists with germination you can see we have see some seed germinating here this is our own seed so now it's uh, obligatory to uh, spray water this bed daily until the carrots reach at least a couple of centimeters in size so their roots go deeper and uh, they can find the deeper moisture in the bed so that happened as well and another thing gardening wise is uh, which happened is this bed which we started to transform into a strawberry bed last uh, autumn most of the strawberries which we planted here didn't take the plants were probably too small or too weak so we decided to interplant uh, there are some which took but uh, just uh, maybe a dozen and there were maybe a hundred planted here so we decided to interplant that with the red bead start and you can see those uh, tiny little nests everywhere those are the red beads which i showed you in a previous video this is Smokey the cat so this will grow beads and the strawberries will grow and also propagate and in fall we'll harvest the beads and plant uh, more strawberries and this is our first strawberry bed it has four varieties though pl those plants are delineating the different varieties we put over 300 plants out of this uh, bed and uh, planted them in the common garden up in the field and in that bed here but obviously we selected the weakest ones for our garden so they didn't take well but those look good enough i uh, streamed the paths yesterday so everything is covered in pieces of grass and the strawberries have been uh, flowering nicely so we expect a good snacking harvest out of them with some alliums which we planted here last year and some garlic as well which are now coming up and will be harvested in the coming days and weeks and uh, this bed was where we planted our peas it's covered in streamed grass now so you can't really uh, see well but those are the peas plant pea plants which have been you can see how all of the leaves are nibbled the growth tips are eaten so they won't be probably growing much taller and even though we get a nice for forage of uh, nice yield of red orange here for salad the peas uh, are probably a failure so this is why we started the seedling tray as an experiment and also i planted some of the left leftover beads here just to compare how it grows and it won't, in, won't interfere with the peas and even though we will plant peas here eventually which will grow up this uh, trellis there won't be a problem because beads don't mind a little shading and even appreciate the additional moisture so that was all for today's update and i'll see you in the next one